I don't feel guilty about my coffee. I don't feel guilty. Like, it's the same thing I was saying the other day about, you know, I, I could, you know, for the cup of coffee a day, all the things you could do. And I'm like, I look forward to that coffee so mm-hmm. much. I, I don't care that it's a waste of money. I don't care that I give Starbucks $4.87 at least twice a day for a drink that costs them less than $0.07 cents to make. <laughs> And creates garbage for the world. I mean, everything about it is just disgusting, and I really loathe myself when I throw that empty cup in the trash. But when I get that cup, it's like I get a high. For I get so excited. It's worth it. But to that's me. what's. But that's why you look at what's worth it to you. What did you learn in your research for this book? That what's like a, a nugget that maybe I can take into my life and our listeners can take into theirs on uh, just s- some money advice that's simple and not overwhelming. Well, uh, this is going to be slightly overwhelming. Okay. Uh, well, it's not, it's not what I asked for, and it's so, not what I paid you for. Yeah. Sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I only came on here because I'm being financially blackmailed. <laughs> Oh God. Um, so uh, yeah, there. Well, so what I did when I was starting was, and I know you just said you don't look at anything, so I'm really sorry to stress you out. I don't. Uh, you, I printed out my bank statements for the whole year, printed them out, uh, and then because they do it by month, and then I went through them with a highlighter, and I highlighted stuff that seemed insane to me. Like so, I would be like, well, that's very high, or I would be like, wait a minute, why is my car payment so much or like Uh why is you know this kind of thing uh i realized i had two subscriptions to something and uh and i was like i don't need two of those so i drop one or one thing i noticed was i was paying a lot for parking in la and i was like do i really like i would run into a store for 15 minutes pay for four hours it's like no don't do that so i like went through and then i made a list of what not i mean and i hate this sort of like generalized information that's like don't buy a latte don't buy avocado toast because that doesn't apply to everyone so I was like you can have a latte but go through your bank statements and notice what what is too much for you personally Mm. I'll buy coffee every day and or make coffee I mean you know coffee is important to me but like (laughs) I'm gonna but I I was like parking is not necessary in this situation or like you know drive around for another second and look for an open spot Got or it. or like um you know oh well i like i looked and was like oh my god my car insurance is so high so then i left that car insurance and looked for a better deal like right. just things where i wouldn't have it ever in front looked of at you. It. yeah i know there was one month i talk about in the book where i i bought 600 dollars worth of stuff on amazon what what was that why yeah so i went through and was like oh, Jesus, like, I didn't need this, I didn't need this, I didn't need this. And I was like, okay, that, I was, whatever I was uncomfortable with, I could see it in front of me. I know, that's that's a good point. Your spending is it's horrible. certainly based on your mood and your thoughts. Mm-hmm. And I, the other day I went shopping and I bought, like, one shirt and I, my mood was instantly elevated. Like, the person I was with was like, <laughs> what just happened to you? And I was like, I bought something. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to, you know, do Marie Kondo and get crap out of my life and not have any more things. But it's, it truly is like buying things makes you feel good sometimes. Yeah. And I'm trying to get it out of my system. You said something about, yeah, the, the coffees. I get. I spend $16 on coffee a day, every day. And Is that four, I don't care. four cups? Yeah. Right, it's like, but three, if, it's like th- maybe two or three Starbucks, at least two every but day. But if you're okay with that, then whatever. I'm but so, if you're, It brings me joy. Right. And you know what, Gabby? I often say to myself, what if I die tomorrow? Like, what yeah. am I saving for? I don't, like, I don't think the world is going that great, and I don't trust that even my money is going to be in the banks when I want it. So I'm kind of like, let me just spend it up. Like, oh, there's a part me, of me that vacillates me. between <laughs> spend it all or save it all, and so I can pay for my. You're me in season one. Really? Yeah, that's like what I came into it with. God. And my dad, my parents are like, can't take it with you, man, because they're like baby boomer that's hippies. What, that's what my dad says. And yeah. then the, the next day it'll be like, well, we are broke, Nikki. And yes. I'm just like, I pick a lane, mom and dad. What are we? My mom says often, uh, oh, well, you're our retirement plan. Yeah. Which is a nightmare. <laughs> oh, I say that to my parents all the time, and I hold it over their head. It's, it's kind of nice to be... I like I'm making enough money now that I feel like I have I'm buying my pos- I, I I often oh this sounds so bad 
But what? like the fact that I can help my parents out if they're in a financial situation mm-hmm. right now feels so good to me. Yeah. And not because like they're going to be happy and secure, but like I told you. Yes. What? Yes. I, that's I feel that too. Nice. I told you so. I t- like, and then I'm the oh, parent. Oh, you wanted me to be a teacher? Mm-hmm. Did you? Mm-hmm. Is that what you, that was your big sight for me, mom, was to be an English professor? Well, guess who wouldn't be going out to, not that my mom lo- is, <laughs> it demands these things from me and wants me to buy her stuff. My mom would be happy shopping and eating at Goodwill the rest of her life. Yes, I said eating. But, <laughs> um, but um, I do feel, I feel great mm-hmm. being able to like, to, to being rich, yes, and, and being able to like buy things for the people I love, yes, so that they can, so I can buy their love. Yeah, I mean, I, I, yes. Well, I did a book tour for the first book, and we weren't going to South Florida where my parents uh, are, so I flew them to the Boston and New York uh, events and put them up in a hotel. Yeah, and they, when they got there, they were like, "It's so nice that your publisher did this," and I was like. I did this. I did this. And they were like, oh, my God, you did this? And I so was like, nice. yes, yes, I fucking did. Yeah. And they were like, that, that, I mean, I think they are not slightly uncomfortable, but they kind of, I think they've lost the power. Yeah. So then I, like, when I went home for Thanksgiving, I was like, I'm staying in an Airbnb. And they were like, wait, what? And I was like, I will be by the beach if you need me. But I'm not staying in the house. And they were upset. I think that is such, that is what my therapist taught me is um, one of the greatest boundaries you can have is not staying at home with your parents yes. when you go home. It's such because a power it's move. A and it's a And it protects you from so much. They're going to take offense to it. But in the end, it really protects. And I, and I don't do it. I stay at home with my parents. And I do the opposite of like, yeah, my room's trashed. But guess what? I. Uh, I pay for everything when I'm home. Yes. And we eat out constantly. You eat out more in one week than you do mm-hmm. a whole year when I'm home. So I'm, my room's going to be a mess and you're not going to say anything about it to me, Mom. Mm-hmm. It's like you're buying... The, freedom. It's freedom. You're buying freedom. It's and It's complete freedom. And I and I always question like if I, if I was... Because I have been broke and relied on them and it wasn't good for our relationship. Not that no. this is even good for our relationship either. Me feeling like I have some kind of upper hand because I'm paying for things because they're not even asking for it. But it just, I don't know what my point is. My point is. No, I mean, I think I would have, they're a lot, my parents. And I think I would have been uh, very, I think it would have damaged our relationship further for me to stay in the house. And so, and then they were upset and I, they have no boundaries, and they, them and my sister have no boundaries. It's like very weird what they talk about and and are. And I kind of have pulled back, and then the family narrative is Gabby's a bitch. But so I yeah. like, but I was like, I, this is the craziest. As I said, they were upset that I was staying at the Airbnb, and I said, well, that's fine. Like, I, you know, I'm gonna be in your city in an Airbnb. If you want to see me, I'm so happy to spend every second with you. Wow. If you don't want to see me. I'll have a vacation. They lost it. And then I was like, this is like, this is the healthiest boundary, one. And two, I realized that they want to see you more than you want to see them. Yes. So you have the power. <laughs> it's really good that you did that. And not a lot of people do that. And if you're listening at home and you just got done with the holidays and you're like, I could never do that. Yes, you could. Yes. Not, you don't have to go home and stay with your family when you are going home for the holidays. You if can you have get money, a hotel. Yes. Yes, of course. You, but you can even stay with a friend. Yes. You don't have to go back home. There's nothing. There's no contract that we we all just we all just blindly go. Yeah, we, I'm I'm gonna stay in my old childhood bedroom. None of that has to happen. And yes, they will be disappointed. And they'll be like, "What does this mean?" It then use my line. Say, "I'm I'll be in this in your same city. I'm happy to spend as much time with you as you'd like." Uh, if you're that upset with me and you don't want to see me, I understand, and I'll hang out with my friends. It's a good line. <gasps> I don't know how to do. I mean, it's it. I I did it one time. I went back and got a hotel, and um, and I never did it again because I'm always like, I just want to save the money and stay at home. But I think you're right. In the end, it's just better to have it's so those boundaries. Guilty. That's why you look at what's worth it to you. Yeah. And then if having you know like. Uh, two Dropbox accounts, which I did, and I was like, why don't I just use Google Drive? Okay. I And you get rid of them, 
And then, then that's the equivalent. That's like, okay, that's like a nine ninety nine payment a month. Yeah, I don't have a. I will never have expensive handbags because most right. of them are made of leather, and I don't believe in leather goods. Right, but it also because matter. I've never cared about leather. I've never cared about handbags. I've just right. never. And I wit and I want to. I want to be a girl who cares about nice things. But my bag is always a to- a disgusting tote, a disgusting tote <laughs> that right, you get you just in a gift at, bag. That's why a lot of money advice is too generalized. You want to look at what matters to you. Okay. And what matters to each person is different. So the the co- the coffee a day thing, like don't don't have shame about the things that actually really matter to you that you're spending money on. And it's just yeah, a lot of the shaming stuff is specifically towards women. They'll be like, don't get a manicure, don't get your hair dyed, and it's like, oh, I'm sorry, you're gonna tell dudes not to buy sneakers. Like, do you know what I mean? It's all directed at women. I want to not get my hair done or nails done <laughs> ever again. I'm so tired of it, and I resent men but that they don't have to do it, Gabby. They don't have to do it. It's that picture of Beyonce very dressed up and Ed Sheeran wearing jeans. I've never loved anything more than that picture. <laughs>